Mmm. Uh, I like to eat the top off the varicake first. I just try to shove the whole thing in my mouth at once. <laughs> I love our job. Now the age-old question, is Avatar actually an anime? Yes? We're making very cakes today. Is it very cakes? Very cakes? I like very cakes because it means more cake. The first thing we need to do to get started with our very cakes is make sure you get your pan ready. I'm using a 9 by 13 inch pan. Make sure you spray the bottom of it and then line it with a bit of parchment paper. The parchment paper is going to help release the cake later and that way you don't have to use as much pan spray. Now for the cake, I am going to measure out 350 grams worth of all purpose flour. And remember, if you want to have a nicer crumbly cake, you can use cake flour, but I like the denser texture of AP flour. To this, I am adding 300 grams worth of granulated sugar, two grams of baking powder, and then one gram of baking soda. You're also gonna need around two grams worth of salt or just a nice heavy pinch. Now give this a quick mix in the bowl, making sure that all of those dry ingredients are totally combined. And then to this, we are going to add 225 grams worth of room temp unsalted butter, and then 120 milliliters worth of whole milk. You wanna save half of that whole milk. Now mix this for just a minute or two until everything starts to come together. You wanna make sure that this keeps a crumbly texture before before we add in the rest of the wet ingredients. Now in a separate bowl, add in 125 milliliters of whole milk, 100 grams worth of fresh sour cream, and then you're also going to add three whole eggs to this. Now, my secret ingredient is going to be lemon zest. I like the way lemon zest plays out in a vanilla cake like this, especially because it's going to help the other flavors of the raspberry later. Now to this, we are adding three capfuls or around 30 milliliters worth of vanilla extract. Make sure you give this a whisk, but don't whisk it too long, so that way you don't incorporate too much air into that milk. Once the eggs are fully beaten and incorporated, slowly start combining this with your dry ingredients in your mixer. You want to make sure you do go slowly at first so that way all of your dry ingredients start hydrating. If you just decide to speed this thing up, then you can have fun cleaning up your mess. Now as you mix and scrape your batter, you want to make sure you actually don't overwork this. If you overwork this, your cake will end up being a little too tough. The best thing to look out for is that it is smooth, but there are still some clumps left in that cake so that way it isn't fully broken down and plus now you get to actually try your cake batter, which is the best part. Now grab your lined 9 by 13 inch pan and give this just a quick spray. You don't want to oversaturate it with any kind of oil. Now remove your paddle first, making sure you get all the good good off of it, followed by your batter directly into the center of your pan so this way it spreads out fairly evenly. Give this a few taps and we're going to bake this in an oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for around 30 minutes. While that cake is baking, we're going to be working on the raspberry jam or the raspberry filling. I am using around 500 grams worth of raspberries for this, but feel free to use whatever fruit you want. To this, I am adding 100 grams worth of granulated sugar, and we're going to bring this over to the stove. Now, I'm only adding in around 50 milliliters worth of water just to start helping the cooking process. Some of you may not actually need to add water depending on the fruit that you're using, so just keep that in mind. Now, as the raspberries cook down and the sugars fully incorporate, you're going to have a ton of liquid start to accumulate at the bottom. This is what we're going to try to actually cook out. And of course, while we're making our raspberry jam, if you are multitasking, your cake should be done while you're in the middle of that jam. Pull it out of the oven and just give it the good old cake test, making sure that when a skewer is put into it, it comes out clean. Just set that to the side for now. Now to test our jam, I had a spoon in the freezer, so this way I can take some of the hot jam, place it onto that now really cold, almost frozen spoon, place this back into the freezer for just a minute or two. While that freezer jam is hanging out, grab your cake, do a little flip de doo onto a cooling rack, remove the parchment from it, and let this cool down for around 10 minutes, but keep in mind that uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna look ugly later, which you'll see. Now my jam actually was a little thin and the reason for that is because there isn't a ton of sugar in this jam. I actually did not want my jam to be super sweet. I wanted it more on the tart side so that's why I didn't incorporate enough sugar into it. Now there is a way to fix this but first we need to strain out all of the seeds. Personally if I'm having a cake and it's going to be nice and creamy and smooth I don't want any of these seeds in my jam so make sure you do strain that out. Once you've strained out all of those seeds and you're left with this beautiful beautiful jam that's really loose in the bowl, this is when we're going to hit it with agar powder. You only need a small amount of agar powder. I started off with around one gram worth of agar and added it to some of my existing jam. Once I fully incorporated it into that small amount of jam, I then incorporated that jam with the agar into my bigger batch. This will allow it to fully incorporate into the jam without you having any weird clumps of agar. Now agar does need heat to activate, so grab that pot, place all of your jam back into your pot, and start heating this back up. You want to bring this to a nice simmer and you do need to simmer this for around four to five minutes until that agar starts to activate.
weight. You wanna make sure you do constantly stir this so your jam does not burn because it can very easily if you're not paying attention to it. After around five minutes of thickening up and cooking, place this into a heat proof jar like this mason jar and this does need to cool down completely for that agar to set. Now I did try to flip my cake back over but you might want to use two hands for this or flip it back onto a sheet tray instead of like what I did and almost broke my cake in half. And you can see as it cooled down, it left some of the marks in there but it's gonna be fine. We're gonna cover this in buttercream. Speaking of buttercream, you're gonna need 225 grams worth of room temperature unsalted butter followed by 225 grams of room temperature cream cheese. Place this into your mixer with a paddle attachment and beat this until it's slightly smooth. Make sure you do scrape down the sides of this so you get all that good good incorporated together. Now, really? We didn't even talk about the sugar yet. Now we do need to incorporate 500 grams worth of powdered sugar into this mixture. I like to add half of my sugar at a time to not overwhelm it and to where I don't like smoke myself out from all the powdered sugar. Make sure you do give the bowl a quick scrape and then add in the second half of your powdered sugar. Now start this off slow so again you don't smoke bomb yourself and as you fully incorporate it add in 15 milliliters worth of vanilla and a pinch of salt. Now bring this up to a medium high speed and really start bringing this thing together. Scraping down is necessary. You should should end up with a beautiful creamy cream cheese buttercream when everything is said and done and this takes less than 10 minutes to put together. Make sure you give that paddle a scrape and this thing needs to be cooled down before you start working with it. Because I don't use a ton of sugar in mine it doesn't set as hard. So I like to place into a container and then into the fridge. Now since I wasn't using my cake right away I ended up wrapping this to be used later on in the day so that's why you see it wrapped in plastic. And for this I only need one third of my cake. The other two thirds you can wrap back in plastic and freeze it. Now remove the edges from your cake and you can see the cake came out fairly nice. It has a nice crumb. It's super spongy. I really like the way this came out. Now I am trimming off the top of this just to make it look a bit more pretty, but feel free to skip that step. It's not super necessary. Now the next step is where we actually cut the cake in half. The reason why I'm cutting it in half is because I actually want to fill the cake with jam. After you cut that in half, cut this into quarters. This is going to give you four vera cakes. Now you can see that I have two halves of this sheet cake. Now grab yourself a small spoon. I'm just using measuring spoons for this and carve out a small channel. This is going to be where we're going to add our jam later. Make sure you do carve it deep enough to where we can add a good amount of jam but not deep enough to where it actually punctures through the bottom so just make sure you keep an eye on that. Now grab yourself some of your beautifully set jam now. You can see how well this set from that agar. Fill in the channel until it's completely flush with jam. Now in hindsight I was thinking about it and I should have actually carved out a channel in the top half as well so this way you had a full tube of jam in the middle rather than just on the bottom. So that's something I would do in the next one. Now, once you have your jam locked and loaded in that channel on your cake, this is ready to get just a touch of that buttercream cream cheese frosting. The reason why I'm taking some of this buttercream cream cheese and spreading it onto that other half of cake is to actually act as the glue to hold everything together. If you were to just take the cake and place it right on top of the other piece without anything on it, it would probably just slide off. So that's not gonna be fun for anyone. Once you have all of your buttercream locked and loaded, place the two pieces of cake together, sealing in that jam and hiding away that special treat. With the edges of it, you can just take your finger and run it along the side, removing any excess buttercream that may have leaked out the side, just to clean things up a bit. Now make sure you do the same thing with each and every one of your Vera cakes. In my case, I only made four. And now we get to actually frost the top of this. Now have some fun with this. I decided to just use my small offset spatula to try to frost the top of this cake. But again, I am no pastry chef. So me frosting cakes is going to look like a Neanderthal tried to use his knuckles and just dragged it over the top of some frosting. Now there is a much better way of doing this and that is with a piping bag. Instead of using a full piping bag, just grab yourself a Ziploc bag and fill it with a small portion of your frosting. Once you have your frosting in, remove as much air as possible from your bag so that way you can start to seal this. Once you have your bag ready to go, cut off a small piece of that plastic from the bag so this way, Gandalf, what are you doing? So this way you don't have a ton of the frosting coming out all at once. Now I just did a very easy zigzag pattern across each of the Vera cakes trying to keep the lines as tight as possible. This way I didn't have any gaps in my frosting and it looked pretty decent once everything was said and done. Now again, this isn't super professional, but it looks better than the Neanderthal one. So I went ahead and used the remainder of my frosting to frost the other two cakes. I tried getting the lines tighter and tighter to each other. So this way they looked really, really cool and really tight. And on one of the cakes, I tried to actually go a little harder on the frosting, but my bag was only allowing me to do so much. I even frosted the Neanderthal cake. So it 
looked halfway decent. And after you frosted all of your Neanderthal cakes, the last thing to do is add a touch of blue to finish off these logos. So fill out just a small amount of your buttercream and hit this with a couple of drops of blue food coloring. This is going to give you a really nice baby blue and I only had to use two drops to get it to this color. I wanted it just a touch darker so I added a third drop, but just remember with food coloring, a little goes a very long way. Now make yourself a bag the same way we did before. Find the logo somewhere on Google and attempt at your best to try to make this logo onto this Vera cake. My piping skills are that of a two year old, so please forgive me for how this logo looks. I tried my best, but I would have been better off just 3D printing a stencil and using that. And there it is, the Vera cakes from Legend of Korra. I don't just eat Vera cakes all day. I do make sure I get a good amount of food in so that way I can try to keep my slim figure. <laughs> That's where today's sponsor Flex Pro Meal comes through. Flex Pro Meals is a meal delivery service where they send out these really good packaged meals directly to you so that way you can be ready at any time of day when you need something good to eat. I'm a big believer in meal prep and being able to meal prep yourself, but sometimes you need a little help from your friends, especially when you're stuck upstairs all day editing. What's great about Flex Pro Meals is that they have all the macronutrients right on the label so you don't have to go searching for it. And this way, my trainer doesn't get super mad so that way I can just input everything into my fitness pal and he knows exactly what I'm intaking. The meals are made fresh, cooled down properly, sealed, and then frozen and sent to you frozen. So this way you can just pop one out of the freezer, throw it in the fridge overnight, and then microwave it the next day. And you have a really good nutritious meal. The best part is that they're giving you guys 20% off your first week of meals by using my link down below and chef code PK. If you're on a fitness journey like I am and really trying to drop some weight because we've been eating a lot of, a lot of cakes and fried things, I'm just you know, use the links down below to flex pro meals and use chef code PK at checkout for 20% off your first week of meals. Thank you to flex pro meals for sponsoring today's video and making sure I don't eat Vera cakes every single day because I would, I seriously would. There it is guys, the beautiful Vera cakes from Legend of Korra. Now I will say, this is pretty straightforward and pretty simple to make and it's a really nice little treat, especially with that lemon in there and the raspberry and all those things. My mouth is watering, cheers. I'm going this way. It's tart, it's buttery. The raspberry really comes through. Look at the filling. Look at the filling in the inside. But do you see why I was saying you could also carve a channel on the top side of that as well so that we get more raspberry? It's totally up to you. Honestly, use whatever filling you want. Put chocolate in there, that'd probably be really good. However you make it, you're gonna like it, I promise. Like seriously, fill it with everything. My name is Chef PK, get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food. This is so good, so good.